What up guys, it is ToolGuyY here and today I'll be walking you through a hydraulic booster removal with the brake bleed procedure on a 2012 Toyota Prius V. Please take a minute, pause and read this thoroughly before starting. These are some of the tools that are required for you to have to fully complete this job. I don't recommend trying this repair if you aren't comfortable doing brake repair work. For this job to be fully completed, you are going to need a scanner with ABS relearns, adaptations, and air bleeding procedures. In this video, I use the Snap-on Solus. To start things off, we'll plug in our scanner to the OBD2 port located at the bottom of the driver kick panel. Once it's plugged in, read the VIN using your scanner and connect to the car. Once connected, select anti-locking brakes and then select functional tests. Once we're in functional test, we're going to go down and select zero down function. The zero down test lowers the brake fluid pressure in the actuator before working on it. This is an important step. Once that's done, disconnect your scanner and turn off the car. Make your way to the back of the car and get to your battery. If you guys don't know where your battery is, don't worry. I have a video up on my channel and I'll put the link in the description below. Once you found your battery, use your 10 millimeter wrench to loosen the negative terminal remove it and put it to the side next locate your service plug located on the hybrid battery and remove it pull left then right then back out to remove this is an important step when working on hybrid cars and it is recommended for you to wait an hour before starting the reason why it's recommended to wait is because the hybrid battery needs to discharge so you don't get shocked while working on the car when the hour is up we can start the repair by removing the windshield wiper arms Use your 14mm socket to remove the nuts that are holding the wiper arms down. Once the wiper arms are removed, put that to the side so it's out of your way. Start removing the window cowl. Start by removing the two clips holding the window cowl down at each end corner. Once that's done, start releasing the clips in the front of the window cowl and make your way to the middle while slowly pulling up. Once all the clips and tabs are released, Remove the window cowl and put to the side. Next, unplug the connector going to the wiper linkage and remove the tabs holding the harness down. Next, remove the four 10mm bolts holding down the wiper linkage, lift up firmly, slide to the left, and remove. Remove the leftover wire harness tabs, then remove the three 10mm bolts holding down the wiper linkage bracket. Once those are removed, we can start removing all the 10mm bolts that are holding down the black tray that's located underneath the window cowl. Once all those 10mm bolts are removed, slide out the black tray carefully. Next, we'll remove the brake fluid reservoir. Start by unplugging the brake fluid level sensor, then taking the two 10mm bolts holding the reservoir down. Then remove connector off of tab. Grab a set of pliers and use those to remove the hose clamps located on the two brake hoses going to the hydraulic brake booster. Once those are removed, I used hose pliers to remove the hoses by twisting them and pulling out firmly. I recommend pinching the hoses off with pliers or using old spark plugs to plug those hoses so you don't waste any brake fluid. Once those hoses are removed, push the reservoir to the side. Next, we're going to remove the brake fluid reservoir bracket. To do this, we're going to take our 14mm socket and our ratchet and remove the 14mm nuts located on the strut mount that's holding down the bracket. Next, we're going to remove this small bracket to make more room to gain access to those brake lines. To remove that bracket, remove the two 10mm nuts holding it down. In this video, I used a 10mm socket on a swivel with an extension to gain access to those nuts. We now can see the hydraulic booster and we can start removing and taking it apart. Remove the two 10 millimeter bolts for the bracket that hold the red brake line to the hydraulic booster. Next, remove the hydraulic booster connector by pulling out firmly towards you, then pulling out towards the driver's side of the car. Tuck to the side so it's out of your way. We can now start removing the four brake lines in the front of the hydraulic booster using our 10 millimeter line wrench. It's always a good idea to keep track of which brake line goes where. Whether it's taking a picture or marking with a paint pen, make sure you do it so you don't swap lines. This step is optional, but I like to actually ratchet strap all the brake lines forward to relieve some space for when we remove and pull out the hydraulic brake booster. Lastly, remove the last brake line located at the top left of the brake booster and push that to the side. Now we're going to go inside the car to remove the brake booster from the brake pedal itself. Start by removing the kick panel cover by removing the two Phillips screws at each side. Once those two screws are off, 
Locate the clip holding it in place on the left side, push forward and pull down firmly. Then remove the wire harness clip and unplug two connectors. Locate where the brake booster meets the brake pedal. When you see that, you'll find that there's a rod that goes through the booster through the pedal that holds it in place. On the rod, there will be a spring and a locking pin. Remove both, slide the rod out, and slide the brake booster off the brake pedal. Next, we could start removing the four 12mm nuts that are holding the brake booster to the firewall. Once those nuts are removed, we could finally pull out the brake booster. Go back to the engine bay and grab the hydraulic booster firmly, pull towards you and pull up, carefully removing it, making sure it doesn't get caught on any wires or brake lines. Don't forget to swap over the gasket to the new one. For installation, reinstall in reverse order up to brake fluid reservoir. Do not install window cowl because we still have to bleed. All right, so at this point, we should have the hydraulic booster back in, all the lines connected, connected to the brake pedal, and all the reservoir brackets and reservoir back in place. The reason why we don't put the cowl back on is because we still have to bleed the stroke simulator. Replug in the service plug by pushing it in, sliding it to the left, and sliding it to the right. This is important because if you don't plug it in correctly, you'll have a bunch of hybrid battery codes. Next, reinstall the negative terminal on the battery and tighten it down with your 10mm wrench. Jack your car up and put them on jack stands. Remove all your wheels by removing the hubcaps and using your 21mm socket to remove all the lug nuts. This part of the repair is going to require two people. One person on the scanner, in the car, holding the brakes, and one person to bleed the brakes at each caliper. Once again, grab your scanner, plug it in, and go to ABS Functions. Once at Functions, select Air Bleeding, then scroll down to ABS Actuator Removed. The air bleeding procedure will be provided to you by your scanner, and it's a very easy process. All you have to do is follow step-by-step -step instructions. The scanner will have you start at the right rear wheel, where you'll grab your 8mm wrench and loosen the bleeder screw. When done, press Next where it'll take you to the left rear wheel where you'll do the same. The scanner basically commands certain parts of the hydraulic booster to force fluid through and purge out all the air. So when you're doing this at each caliper, always remember to fill up brake fluid after each wheel. After doing the rear wheels, they'll have you move on to the front. Just like the rear calipers, the bleeder screws in the front are 8mm as well. When opening the bleeder screw, it will shoot out in spurts. Don't worry, that is normal. After all the wheels are bled, press next which will take you to the stroke simulator. The stroke simulator bleeder screw is located on the top right hand side of the hydraulic booster. Once the stroke simulator is bled, it will have you redo the two front wheels. This time it will spray out, not like before. This is also normal. Once the left front is done, press next where it will have you do the same thing on the right front. Still making sure that we top off brake fluid between each wheel. Once done, press next and that will be the end of the air bleeding procedure. But don't just leave yet, we still have one more thing to do. We still have to relearn the linear valve offset. Clean off all residue previously sprayed from the brake bleeding procedure, reinstall wheels, and bring the car back down to the ground. Once the car is lowered to the ground, grab your scanner and scan for codes. You should have two codes and one of them should be linear valve offset not learned. Back out and scroll down to functional test where you'll click on linear valve offset relearn. Just follow the instructions and it'll take you to a screen where you just press start. At one point it'll say the ABS and traction control light will flash quickly. Hopefully they are because if there isn't there may be something else wrong with your ABS system. The whole relearn procedure takes about 2 minutes and the lights will flash at about 1 minute in so just be patient when doing this relearn procedure. Once the relearn is done. Back out, scroll up to clear codes and clear all your codes. Once it's cleared, turn off your car and wait a couple seconds. Once a couple seconds are up, start your car, check for codes, and make sure all your dash warning lights are gone. Once everything's good, reinstall your wiper linkage tray to your wiper arms and you guys are done. Congratulations guys, you now know how to do a hydraulic booster on a 2012 Toyota Prius V. Thank you guys for watching, hope you guys found this video informative. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel for more how-to and tour review videos.